Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the June 13th, 2022 County Commission meeting. I'm going to ask our Sheriff John Susan to call our meeting to order. If you would, please remain standing for the pledge led by Commissioner Larry Riccone and our invocation by Commissioner Joe Creek. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our Father and our God, we ask that you be with us during our meeting tonight. It's one of the most important meetings we have during the year. We just pray that you'll lead God and direct us in all we do and say. Thank you for how you've blessed us in so many ways here in Montgomery County with leadership and other areas. I will trust in the Lord with all thine heart and learn not on your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. It says that in Proverbs 3, 5, 6. Lord, you have given us so much. Please grant us one more thing a grateful heart. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Ms. Cottrell, would you please tally the roll, please? We have 19 present, two absent. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioners, ladies and gentlemen, we have just a couple of presentations tonight. First, we have a uh, certificate of achievement. And if I could get Ms. Sierra Bowser uh, to come forward, please. And Sierra, I don't know if your coach, Christina Webb, is Miss Webb here? Miss mm -hmm. Webb, where are you? Oh, you need to come forward too. Please, ma'am. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Sierra is the state of Tennessee class AAA winner of the long jump. Uh, so, Sierra, congratulations to you. Uh, the, the, you have to, I'm just kind of an old country person, but there ain't many people that can say they're state champs. So, Sierra, congratulations to you, and I'd like to present to you this certificate of achievement presented on behalf of Montgomery County to Sierra Bowser. As a member of the Northeast High School Lady Eagles track team and capturing the Tennessee State TSSAA Class AAA Track and Field Championship in long jump at 18 feet, four and three quarter inches. Sierra, congratulations to you. <laughs> yeah. All right, and I also have a proclamation. If I could get uh, Honorable Judge Wayne C. Shelton to come forward. Judge Shelton, I, I think your better half's here with you if you'd like to have her come forward as well. <laughs> How are you tonight? Good to see you. Good evening. So, Judge, if you would uh, allow me... Uh, to read this proclamation uh, by the Montgomery County, by the County Mayor, whereas today we express our appreciation to the Honorable Judge Wayne C. Shelton and honor him for his outstanding and dedicated 43-year career to the Division II of Montgomery County Juvenile and General Sessions Court, whereas Judge Shelton is the longest presiding General Sessions and Juvenile Court Judge in the great state of Tennessee. 
whereas Judge Shelton graduated from Stuttgart High School in Stuttgart, Arkansas in 1963 and went on to graduate from Southwestern in Memphis, which became Rhodes College in 1967 with a BA in philosophy. And he graduated from Memphis State University School of Law in 1973 served in the U.S. Army as an artillery officer from 1968 to 1972, and was stationed with the West Germany Army. Whereas soon after receiving his law degree, Judge Shelton began practicing in Clarksville, Tennessee, and on July 1, 1979, he was appointed judge by the Division II Juvenile and General Sessions Court by Governor Lamar Alexander, and has served in that capacity since that date. Whereas Judge Shelton will certainly be remembered with deep respect and affection by all who worked with him throughout his 43-year career, and he will certainly be missed by his friends and co-workers. And whereas during his retirement, we know Judge Shelton is looking forward to traveling and working in his vegetable garden, but most important, we'll be spending time, we'll be spending more time with his wife, Patty, his children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And Judge, it's not in here, but I want to say this. Uh, in 43 years, I know that um, you've had a many, many folks come before you. And I know there's a lot of people that you've changed their lives and you changed it for the good. So I want to add that in and personally thank you right now. And so now, therefore, I, Jim Durrett, Mayor of Montgomery County, Tennessee, and on behalf of the Board of Commissioners and the citizens of this community, to hereby express our sincere appreciation to the Honorable Judge Wayne C. Shelton for his loyal and outstanding service to Montgomery County. We wish him much happiness and good health as he begins this new chapter in his life. Happy retirement, Judge Shelton. Judge, congratulations to you. There's a lot of my staff is here tonight. I'm proud of that. And what do we have? Almost two rows of just family members that, that, that <laughs> fill it up between, between children and, and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And one of them even already has said, hi, Papa. <laughs> and it's going to come join me. But I, I do appreciate this recognition. Uh, serving this county has been a real honor for these 43 years. Serving before that serving the United States through the Army for three and a half years. That's a, another honor I'm very proud of. The service to this county is, 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 is an honor that I know all of you understand and the other judges that are here, it's a real blessing to be a servant. And now as Truman said, I'm no longer a servant, I'm going to be elevated to be a people. Just one of the people. <laughs> I do have one more thing I got to add. I got all y'all captive here. I got to say this. It might be not appropriate, and might, y'all might throw rocks at me at this point, but we as a juvenile court, we got to have a resource center. We, three and a half hours. So we had some, we had my staff, my staff is clapping. They're up at two o'clock at night trying to find places to put someone. Three and a half hours, is that right? The DCS had, we had to work, had to drive three and a half hours to put a runaway in a bed. What was that, night before last? Last, yeah, yeah. So my staff is here, they're shaking their head, yes. I know we're getting, at, at to an election, thing, people will change, things will change, but that which will not change is we need this resource center. Thank you, Judge. All right, commissioners, our first order of business are zoning resolutions. Uh, 
Our first resolution is CZ 10 2022 application of, excuse me, but I'm going to have to just say Dr. Suni from R1 to R3. Is there a motion for approval? Commissioner Siegler, is there a second? Commissioner Bryant, any discussion on CZ 10 2022? If you would, please register your vote. Would anyone like to change their vote? Ms. Cottrell, would you please tally the vote? We have nine yeses, 11 noes, zero abstentions. Thank you, ma'am. CZ 10 2022 fails. Next is CZ 11 2022 application to DGTF Clark Enterprises LLC from C5 AG to R4 C5. Is there a motion for approval? Commissioner Riccone, second Commissioner Joe Smith, any discussion on CZ 11 2022? Commissioner Garland Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Not to belabor the point or to repeat anything from last week, uh, nothing has changed. This project still appears to be a mess. The, uh, the proposed road that they were speaking of, uh, just for edification of the other commissioners here, that would include uh, property that currently belongs to a homeowner that lives uh, within this zone that we do not own. This is the uh, same property that we, the uh, state managed to take part of their front yard in order to widen Guthrie Highway, and now we are proposing to go behind their home and put another road. Uh, just the idea of putting 900 apartments in the middle of the industrial complex, because it would be in the middle. There are industrial sites on all sides of this property. It just breeds conflict. The, the number of complaints that we get just from the residences that are currently out there is astronomical. And if you put another 900 families there, you can just imagine how bad that's going to be. The drawback to apartments is it only takes a change in management to change what type of apartments that you have. They may be high end today, but when they change management and they change clientele, now you have tenements in the middle of your industrial complex and good luck getting some high profile businesses to come in then. We have invested hundreds of millions of dollars. The city has invested hundreds of millions of dollars and the taxpayers have invested hundreds of millions of dollars in order to make this industrial complex that we have thrive and grow. This would effectively choke it out. And as a last note, some of the information that was in your packet, I don't know if you read it or not, but it was not spoken of last week, is that uh, Oakland Elementary is at 108% capacity right now uh, with portable classrooms. Northeast Middle is at 107% with 10 portables. Northeast High is at 92%. We were in a meeting with the school system just this week, or last week rather, and they spoke on the new Kirkwood complex that we are building. And the estimates are that it will be full by 2025-2026. That is not including these apartments that we are voting on tonight. And I don't believe it includes the mega complex that we voted on last month. I just ask for your support on this. This is a no for me. Thank you. Commissioner Pritchard. Yes, I understand Mr. Johnson's point, but I also understand that uh, we have two huge companies coming in that are bringing jobs with them. And we have to house these people that are coming here. FedEx announced that they're coming to us today, or well, I heard of it today. I know it's a few days behind, but nonetheless, that's going to be jobs that we have to find housing for the people who work them. And I hate to put housing where it shouldn't be, but if you don't want it here, where it's at between in the industrial park or close to it, 
We need to find a place to put it. We're going to have to keep on building. We're attracting businesses from all over the world. We're going to have to keep on building. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Any other discussion on CZ 11? If you would, please register your vote. Would anyone like to change your vote? Ms. Cottrell, would you please tally the vote? We have six yeses, 14 noes, zero abstentions. Thank you, ma'am. Resolution CZ 11 2022 fails. Uh, next is AB 2 2022 resolution approving the vacation of an unimproved road stub east of Monticello Trace and northeast of Taylor Hall Lane. Sir, so a motion for approval. Commissioner Ray, second. Commissioner Rasnick, any discussion? If you would, please register your vote. Would anyone like to change their vote? Ms. Cottrell, would you please tally the vote? 20 yeses, zero noes, zero abstentions. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioners, uh, next on our agenda is the consent agenda. All items in this portion of the agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by the County Commission and may be approved by one motion. However, a member of the County Commission may request that item be removed for separate consideration. Commissioners, we're going to pull 2263. Uh, that's the, uh, the cleanup resolution. Uh, there's been a lot of changes in those numbers. Some things have happened since the budget committee meeting and since informal. So uh, without objection, that item will be pulled. Uh, so I'm going to read the consent agenda. 2261 resolution accepting the public improvements program and capital budget 2022-23 through 26-27 compiled by Montgomery County and approved by the Clarksville Montgomery County Regional Planning Commission. Resolution 2262, resolution to add a deputy county historian to assist in collecting and preserving local and state history. Resolution 2264, resolution of the Montgomery County Board of Commissioners approving amendments to the CMC SS 2021-22 school budget. Resolution 2265, Resolution of the County Commission of Montgomery County, Tennessee, approving an economic impact plan for the Vulcan Plant Development Area and adopting designated development area policies and procedures. Resolution 2266, Resolution of the County Commission of Montgomery County, Tennessee, authorizing art installation at Veterans Plaza. Resolution 2267, Resolution authorizing the purchase of turnout gear for Montgomery County Volunteer Fire Service using ARPA funds. Under uh, our, also on the consent agenda are our minutes uh, dated February 9th, 2022, the county clerk's report uh, and notary list, the nominating committee nominations and commissioners uh, if with Without objection, if you would add these appointments to the uh, consent agenda under county mayor nominations and appointment, judicial commissioners Michael Williams reappointed for a one-year term, uh, Ronald Paris part-time reappointed for a one-year term, Parks Committee Rashida Leverett nominated to replace Commissioner Chandler for a two-year term, expiring June of 24, and Chris Rasnick nominated to replace Commissioner David Harper for a two-year term to expire June of 2024. And under uh, the Adult Orient Establishment Board, Pat Vaden, Ed Groves, Ellen Thomas, Bryce Sanders, and James Thomas all reappointed for a four-year term expiring May of 2026. And Joe Smith appointed to replace James Lewis for a two-year term to expire June 2024 on the Economic Development Council. And then also on the consent agenda of the highway department first quarter 2022 road reports. So a motion for approval on the consent agenda. Commissioner Keene, second. Commissioner Pritchard, any discussion, any items to be pulled from the consent agenda? Commissioner Albert. It's a clarification. I think you mentioned February and it should be May 9th. 
all the minutes? Oh, yes. May 9th. I, yes, I could have. I probably did. I <laughs> Thank seen, you. I seen Shelly shaking her head over there. Th so thank you. I figured somebody yeah, needs to say I, something. I, I, I don't know. I guess I was thinking about Valentine's Day. Who knows? <laughs> any, any, thank you, Commissioner Albert. Any other uh, comments? If you would, please register your vote on the consent agenda. Would anyone like to change your vote? Ms. Cottrell, would you please tally the vote? 20 yeses, zero noes, zero abstentions. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioners, we will now hear 2263, resolution to amend the budgets of various funds for fiscal year 2022 in certain areas of revenues and expenditures. Is there a motion for approval? Commissioner Randy Albert, second Commissioner Joe Smith, Commissioner Gannon. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor Durrett. I would like to amend resolution 22-6-3 uh, to the following. One, to add additional 25,000 to facilities and maintenance account 101-51810-50-51-53350 maintenance and repairs building. This is to cover repairs from the sprinkler system at the core complex. To add an additional 75,000 to the sheriff's office account 101-54110 and five zeros, 54-54250, gasoline due to higher than anticipated fuel costs. To, and to add an additional 37,000 to the Sheriff's Office account 101-54110-50-54-55040 in direct costs. To move 50,000 from 101-54110-50, 50-54-57070 building improvements to 101 54110 50 57900 other capital in the sheriff's office. At 48800 to revenue account 101 54310-50-54-46290 other public safety grant for training stipend for fire service. And finally to add 488 48,800 to fire service account 101-54310-50-54-51960 in service training to pay out the training stipend for the fire service. Is there a second to the amendment? Commissioner Garland Johnson, second. Any discussion on the amendment? So we're voting uh, uh, any, dis Commissioner Woodruff. Yes. Just one question, Mayor. Um, indirect cost, can we clarify what indirect cost is? What does that mean? I think Mr. Taylor can. That was for deductible billing and legal services through local government. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. We, we have a motion and a second for the amendment to 2263. We're, Commissioner Pritchard, do you have a question? No. Oh, I thought you raised your hand. Okay. If you would, please register your vote on the amendment. Would anyone like to change their vote? Ms. Cottrell, would you ta please tally the vote? 20 yeses, zero noes, zero abstentions. Thank you, ma'am. We are now voting on 2263 as amended. Any discussion? If you would, please register your vote. I know, I kind of, Commissioner Bryant. I was just trying to vote, sir. Oh, okay. Well, I kind of got a little quick. I'm sorry. Would anyone like to change your vote? Ms. Cottrell, would you please tally the vote? 20 yeses, zero noes, zero abstentions. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner, now on to our resolutions. Resolution 2268 is a resolution to ratify Private chapter number 48, House Bill number 2892, Senate Bill number 2908 of the 112th General Assembly of the State of Tennessee, relative to the Montgomery County General Sessions Court Judge Compensation. Is there a motion for approval? Commissioner Joe Smith, second. Commissioner Riccone, any discussion? Commissioner Leverett. Yes, Mayor. Um, on this particular bill, I, if I do recall being a member of the budget committee, um, and I, I hope my budget um, uh, committee members will help me with that, we were told that if we were to go ahead and um, approve 
this by two thirds votes, that we would know that the judges um, wouldn't ask for another judge. The only concern I have about this is that with the growth of Montgomery County and Judge Shelton himself just referring to a um, you know, maybe proposed juvenile resource center, I'm concerned that we may actually need another judge. And so I'm asking for clarification. Will the uh, judges in the future need another judge? And what would be the different salaries between the circuit court judge, the chancellors, and the general sessions? Because I pulled the bill up from the state assembly website and I could not find the numbers on the salaries. I can't I can't a answer the question, uh, Commissioner Leverett, on whether or not uh, there would be a request for another general sessions judge. I, I cannot answer that. And I, I don't think uh, our meeting is set up. I know we have several judges here to allow any of the judges to come forward and address it. I, I do know that uh, and I don't know if Jeff can find this. Uh, the difference in, in the pay. Do you know what the total is? Yeah, uh, we we have. Uh, I, I think it's total about seventy something thousand dollars. Yep. I I, I I don't have that. I do I do not have that number for you tonight. I'm sorry. Hello, hello. Okay, there we are. Um, I, I know that this doesn't take effect until September 1 of 2022. And so I would like to ask if we could just table this for our July meeting just so we can get the accurate numbers. I'm okay with the salary and everything. I just would like to know the differences in the salary and if our judges would, in fact, will or will not need an additional judge consider the growth of Montgomery County. I don't think, tables the language. I don't think you want to table it. Okay. I think you want to just vote to defer it but yes i'm to, sorry to, to wrong our language next regular <laughs> schedule meeting which which will be i can't hear you july 11th yes and so, just is, so are we you can putting that in the form of a motion yes may, uh, may i like to make a motion that we refer uh resolution 226-8 until the july 11th meeting just to get the numbers for the commission is there a second commissioner jerry albert second any discussion on the motion to defer? If you would, please register your vote. Would anyone like to change your vote? Ms. Cottrell, would you please tally the vote? 19 yeses, one no, zero abstentions. Thank you, ma'am. Resolution 2269 is a resolution to levy a tax rate in Montgomery County, Tennessee for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2022. Is there a motion for approval? Commissioner James Lewis, second. Commissioner Chandler, any discussion on 2269? If you would, please register your vote. Would anyone like to change their vote? <coughs> Ms. Cottrell, would you please tally the vote? 19 yeses, one no, zero abstentions. Thank you, ma'am. Resolution 22610 is a resolution making appropriations for the various funds, departments, institutions, offices, and agencies of Montgomery County, Tennessee for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2022 and ending June 30, 2023 and approving the funding of nonprofit charitable organizations in accordance with TCA 59109. Is there a motion for approval? Commissioner Lewis, second. Commissioner Gannon, any discussion on 22610? Commissioner Joe Smith. Yes, Mayor. I'd like to make an amendment to the budget um, under your capital projects. I'd like to make the following amendment remove the $10 million from the North Branch Library construction. And that's due to the library having to be redesigned for a building not to exceed $11 million. I'd like to reappropriate that 10 million for the following. For Stokesville construction, add an additional 8.5 million. This will allow the design to be completely built at the original value of 16 and a half million. That would fund the complete construction, not just half of the construction. And that would be a great addition to North Clarksville. 
or North Montgomery County. Fredonia Community Center Park design add 400,000. This project was supposed to be started two years after the community center was built. P uh, Public Safety Training Complex Fire Tower K-9 Course and South Road design add 250,000. This project has been on hold for a while while we were waiting for a grant and that grant no longer supports this project. So it's time for us to fund that. And then I would like to do the North Branch Library design of 700,000. This project must be redesigned to allow for animal control to fit on the same site and we must set a cap on the design. So the design is for a building not to exceed $11 million. This would leave $150,000 left over to put back in reserves in case of cost exceeding projections. There's second by Commissioner Harper. Any discussion? Commissioner Ganny. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the first thing I'd like to, we can't, uh, the amendment's gotta pass before you can make an amendment on the amendment, doesn't it have to, Mayor? Or can I make an amendment to the amendment? You gotta, vote on the gotta vote on the amendment first. Uh, the the fire tower and the road design, the 250, I don't think should be put in there. I'd like to see that removed. The reason why the budget committee took those out was because up in Nashville, at uh, what's the, they're building a, uh, Governor Lee is building a $400 million complex that's going to have all the safety stuff in it and everything else. It's right up 30 minutes from here. Uh, maybe 45, and Cockrell Bend, which is over by John Toon Airport. They're going to have dormitories. They're going to have all that stuff similar there. And people are going to bypass here. We were going to have dormitories and build it up, and that's what that goal was. People are going to bypass here and go to Nashville to get that training just because of where it is and just because it's going to be a lot more for them to do in safety training. It's a $400 million complex. So I think that needs to be removed, in my opinion. Yeah, Commissioner Harper seconded the amendment. Uh, Commissioner Smith, if you since you uh, let it off, I'm going to go to Commissioner Leverett. Um, yes, I and did I'll come see. Back to you, sorry. I did see that article as well. Um, does the sheriff or does Mr. Smith know if that's going to be accessible to um, our first responders in Montgomery County? Is that statewide, or does anybody know? Do you know? I I, I don't I don't know. I I don't know that anybody's asked the state though. I think it's. In my opinion, it would be potential for maybe some of those state funds to be used on our facility or for some of our folks to go to theirs. But th th I don't know that. I don't know that if anybody's asked the state that. Okay. So then I would ask, May, I'm sorry, Mr. Smith, if he could look into whether we can get some of that state funding for our burn tower here in Montgomery County. Is that something that you would be amendable to? Oh. <laughs> so, um, when it comes to the fire tower, the canine course, and the south road, uh, what I'll say about that is this. There, yes, Nashville might build something. There's no guarantee. You know, that could always be cut. And we have a fire training academy in Bellbuckle down in Shelbyville, okay? And the city of Clarksville has used that facility, and our volunteer fire service has used that facility of Bellbuckle. But the thing is, we have an amazing uh, crew of volunteers and their hearts in it. And what happens is they're taking time out of their day, their life, away from their kids and their family to go travel away from home to get extra training to protect you for free. Well, minus the small, and I do mean small, stipend they get per call. So building a fire tower or, and I'm not even asking for it to be built here. I want it to be designed in this. What I'm asking for is for us to invest back in our volunteers. These people put their life on the line for our community every day of the week, and they do it asking for nothing in return. So if we can build something that would help train them to protect their life and the life of people in our community, I think we should do that. I think that's just, I think that's, the right thing to do for our community and for our volunteers. But I will be happy if the state says that we can use some of that money, I'll be the first one jumping up and down saying, hey, can we get some? Hey, can we get some? I know Chief uh, Edwards and Chief Baggett will jump up and down too saying, hey, can we get some? 
And I know Sheriff Fuson, because this is part of the safety training complex out there, he'd jump up and down trying to get some for his deputies. Uh, if, if it's available, we'll definitely try to get it. There, there's no doubt about that. But we should at least start the ball rolling down the court on our design side of it and invest back in our volunteers and our deputies. Commissioner Harper. Thank you, Mayor. I Just to reiterate what Commissioner Smith has said, I stand with a uh, majority of my districts outside the city limits. Uh, fire service is very important and I support our volunteer fire department throughout the county and need them to know that they're very important to us. We appreciate them very much and this is an act to try to get them the training that they so, uh, so deserve. So I'd appreciate your help. Commissioner Leverett, since you've spoke, I'm going to go to uh, Commissioner Woodruff was there, but uh, he, no, you, you I'm back? Still here. I'm still here, Mayor. All right. Thank you. I, I agree with, I, excuse me, I agree with John Gannon, Commissioner Gannon. Um, I'm always concerned about the volunteer firefighters, but I have a problem with training them, building a tower, training them, and they go somewhere else. That is the problem I have with it. Uh, we could spend a lot of money on a lot of things, but if we're not going to keep them, then why are we training them for someone else? So I'm opposed to this one. So I think we ought to just push this back, defer to another date, maybe the 11th of July, so all of the commissioners can go through and understand what we're saying for these, uh, this amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you can move to a I'm going to go to Commissioner Lisa Pritchard because yes. everybody else has had their turn so far. Okay, in response to Commissioner Woodruff, um, we have no control over anybody leaving us to go elsewhere. We just try to give them the best training that we can so that they can serve us well. I'm hoping that you approve this amendment to the resolution because Stokes Field is in my area of town and it has been neglected and it is used by a large portion of children out there even though it is in such a neglected state. And from what I see on this amendment, all of these things have to do with communities. And I would hope that everybody's involved in making their communities better. So if you're interested in making your communities better, the little bit of monies that he is talking about here is a good investment. And I would hope that you approve this amendment. Thank you. Commissioner Garland Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a quick uh, reminder to our fellow commissioners life is full we've got stuff every second and that's just people who go to work and then go home you know as well as I do what just being on the commission does to your schedule now imagine these people who go out and risk their lives for free it's what they do Whenever there is possible loss of property or life, they drop whatever they're doing, they go and they put on their equipment and they rush into a burning structure for free. Just a reminder. Thank you. Commissioner Leverett. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't think it's your second time. Yes, I know. Or third. I don't know, but okay. I, I just want to say this. I don't know how we got on the got down the the uh, got to the conversation that um, uh, our, our first responders won't be supported. So let me just clarify that. You have my one hundred percent support. I don't know how we how we got down that conversation. My only question was: Is it possible for the state to fund this? 
And, if, and I was just looking for a yes or no answer, not whether we had support for the first responders, because obviously we do, you know. Um, so I'm okay with this. My only question was, would we give money from the state if possible? That was the question. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> and, and Commissioner Smith and Commissioner Gannon, just let, let me interject something, if you don't mind. Uh, one, just a clarification on, on, on the 10 million. As part of the budget process, we budgeted 9 million of taxpayer dollars and a million was coming from the library that they agreed to put forward. And so if you use the 10 million, you're gonna be adding $850,000 because the balance of 150 and plus you're gonna to have to add $850,000 to our bottom line, to our budget tonight. It will be a $850,000 add to our budget tonight because it's technically only 9 million. Uh, the second point that I would uh, like to bring forward is, and, and I, I say this, Commissioner Leverett, thank you for saying it. With all due respect to all of our, every single one of our first responders, to our Sheriff's Department, our EMS, our EMA, our volunteer fire, all of them, every single one of them, I thank them so much for what they do. The public safety training complex was not a project that was part of our capital projects improvement plan ever. It got brought before this body, the body voted to buy the land, then the body turned around to build the shooting range. It's gotten put in front of a lot, a lot of projects. So I, I, I don't know if you're an advocate of the library or not, but we have told them we were gonna build them a library on the north side of town. And we, we told them this time around that we're still going to build it, but it ain't going to be as big. And now we're saying all we're going to do is design it. So I'm going to let y'all fight that out. If it becomes a tie, I think you'll figure out how I'm going to vote. Commissioner Joe Smith. Okay, with that new information, it didn't say that a million was coming from the library. I would like to adjust my amendment to change the amount for Stokes Field to 7.5 million. Actually, 7.65, 7.65 million, actually. Yeah, I, I, well, I, think, I, we I think you can't amend your own amendment. I think Commissioner Gannon can, if he gets a second, he can that's ask only after to amend. This approved, he correct? Can, I think Commissioner Gannon can ask to amend the amendment since there was a second. Since there was a second. But I don't think you can amend your motion. I did. I asked if there was a second. When his, when his motion to amend was made and there was a second, it was on the floor. You can move to amend what's on the floor. Anybody can move to amend what's on the floor. Well, you can't amend it. You'd have to make a motion to amend. My, my point is somebody, you got an amendment on the floor because of the second from Mr. Harper. And so someone else has to make a motion to amend. You can't just do it without a motion. Anyone can, anyone can, amend, their mo, can amend the motion that's on the floor. I would like to make a motion to amend my amendment to change the amount to the Stokesville construction to 7.65 million. Is there a second? Commissioner Lewis. And, and then I'd like to speak on it for a second because I gave up. Okay, we, are, oh, we have a motion and a second to amend the original motion that was read out in detail. Uh, Y'all stick with me over there, ladies. Uh, so we are now, any discussion on the amendment to the amendment? <laughs> Commissioner I'm still on there. Smith, Joe. I'd like to answer Commissioner Woodruff's uh, question or statement a minute ago. I don't think we lose a lot of volunteers. Uh, uh, if, pardon me. Oh. We are discussing your amendment to your amendment. Oh, okay. Which is changing the dollar I'd amount like for Stokesfield. I'd like your support Stokesfield. for the $7.65 million change so we can have that on the original amendment. Any discussion? on the amendment. 
Commissioner Gannon, no. Nope. No. No. So we are now voting on the amendment to the amendment, which is to reduce the funding that was proposed from Stokes Field from seven from eight million five hundred thousand dollars to seven million six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And before we vote, Jeff, I just want to make sure. I, I don't know if anybody's done this math, but make sure all this is going to add up to nine million. I don't question Commissioner Smith's math, but <laughs> I, I, see, I see him doing it right now. And so, uh, if y'all would just allow us to vote or allow us to check this math. Yep, that's what I got. All right, any any other discussion on the amendment? Everybody clear what we're voting on? We're voting on amendment to, to amend the amendment uh, for Stokesfield to change it from $8,500,000 to $7,650,000. If you would, please register your vote. Would anyone like to change their vote? Ms. Cottrell, would you please tally the vote? 13 yeses, 7 noes, 0 abstentions. Thank you, ma'am. All right, now we're going back uh, to the amendment, uh, which would be um, to use the $9 million for the following. Stokes Field adds $7,650,000 to construction. Fredonia Community Center Park Design. 400,000, public safety training complex, fire tower, canine course, and south road design, 250,000, and the north branch library design, 700,000. Is there a motion for approval as amended? Commissioner Smith, is there a second? Commissioner Pritchard, now we're discussing the amendment as amended. Commissioner Joe Smith. Okay, this uh, This is a totally this, different one, but I'll let you go in front of him. So go ahead. <laughs> uh, I would like to make an amendment to the amendment to take out the PST fire station, Canine Course, Southridge Road for 250000 There, I know we're working on trying to get salaries for these volunteers. That is in the works. We love our firefighters and our volunteers. No offense, but Bell Buckle is over by Shelbyville, so who's going to travel an hour and a half to two hours? I understand why it's hard to get to. I would think that we reimburse them for traveling when they go, the fire people. We don't just cost them on their own dime. I would hope that we do that. If we don't, we need to implement it. And then my next question is, as we talked about the mayor and the money that come down here, has anyone even spoken with them about possibly bringing money to Clarksville, to our facility? Or has that just been, that's just been left alone? I'll take it as it's been left alone, that nobody's approached them. Thank you. They need to be approached. So you, you, the motion is to remove the two hundred fifty thousand uh, that's associated with the public safety training complex. Correct. Right. Yes, sir. Is there a second? Second, Commissioner Woodruff. Any discussion on the amendment? Commissioner Joe Smith. I go back to this. I guess it's all about the public safety training complex and the tower. The $400 million state complex is news to all of us recently. So it's not something that any of us have even had time to approach our state reps or anybody about and, and discuss getting funding for something here. Uh, but to answer Mr. Woodruff's question about the volunteers a minute ago, I don't think we lose them and have a high turnover rate. But what, what you have to understand is these guys have to have annual training. They're not getting paid a salary. They're doing this on their own time away from their families. Every hour of training, they, and they go through a 64 hour course, and then I believe there's another one, then you have to do hazmat tech training, you have to do rescue training, extrication training. There is a lot of certification and training involved in being a first responder. And some of you might know, I understand that from a personal point of view because I was a rescue guy for 12 years at the city of Clarksville. These guys do it without a salary. 
they, they leave their families and go to your house or your call where you need an ambulance or a first responder, or if your house is on fire, they're the first one to run in and save any pet or human life in that structure. And to train them locally would help us keep them local and get them more time with their family when they're done training instead of being on the road driving. And also, it wouldn't be at a cost to us other than this training tower. When we send them to Bell Buckle or if this new state facility, do you think it's gonna be free to go train there? It's never free when you go train at other places. They always have a charge. So every time we send somebody to one of those academies, we pay for it. This is a way to keep it in house and not technically have to pay for it if we could get, just get some captains and chiefs at our local volunteer departments trained as trainers they could do the training themselves and help bring all of our newer volunteers up to speed. I, I'd appreciate your support not supporting this amendment and leaving it as the original. Commissioner Pritchard, discussing the amendment. Yes, I, I, I agree with, with uh, Commissioner Smith. I was in law enforcement. I was trained in Nashville. It's the worst thing in the world. If as big a city as we are, we're afraid to build for our own to train our own, I feel embarrassed to even hear that. Um, these people are volunteering just to keep the fires down in the county, and we are re refusing to help them be trained right here. We have to send them to Nashville. We pay for Nashville. We're not getting anything out of it by sending them except spending more money. I think that the little bit of money that we're spending on this tower is going to give us a lot more reward than the amount of money we have to spend to send them to Nashville to train. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner Leverett. Yes, Mayor. I would like to ask Mr. Smith or anyone from um, our first responders or law enforcement, if this is approved, how long will this be? Um, will it take for this to be constructed if these dollars are awarded? This is not construction. This is just design. Design typically can take up to a year, but that would be a question for Nick Powell. I don't know if he's in the audience. Tonight. I, I think you could probably Here's have Nick. all of it designed. Design takes about a year. And have it ready to be funded for or to have an estimate for next fiscal year. Yes. I mean, I think that's, you know, I think that's a reality for all three of those projects. And, and Mayor, can I hit, that's the whole reason for this amendment, was the library's Look, not ready for construction due to the fact that it has to. Well, neither of these, neither of these. Neither, that's what I'm saying, that's why these. these are yeah. just designed. Com obviously. Commissioner Leverett still has the floor. Commissioner. Oh, sorry. That's so okay. um, I'm gonna come back to you. With with it just designed, um, and I know I don't I don't want to get go down the rabbit hole, Mayor, and but I just heard something I didn't hear before, and Mr. Smith alluded to the fact that our first responders are spending their home, own money to go travel. Is there any way that we can amend the budget to add travel pay in there for our first responders? I, I guess you could, but I I don't know I don't know what you'd add. Uh, I don't know that anybody's ever approached us about uh, them being compensated uh, for their travels. Uh, I would certainly be in favor of compensating them for their travels. But again, uh, it's never been brought forward. So I don't have any idea what the number would be or, or anything like that. I guess you could you could ask uh, EMA to, to get that or the fire chief to get you that number and come back at a later date and amend the budget for it. Okay, I'll, I'll do that. Okay. Good. Commissioner Harper. Okay, he's calling for the question. The question is to cease discussion. Um, it's going to take two thirds vote to cease discussion. So, do y'all want to vote on it or y'all want to keep talking? Uh, we have a motion to cease discussion. Is there a second? Second, Commissioner James Lewis. All right, uh, we are now voting to cease discussion. And the, ma'am, sir, that ruling isn't once somebody's registered to speak, they can still speak even though somebody's called a question. So once he's pushed his button to speak, the question came after that. That person is allowed to speak. So the chair's that, that that's within the chair's prerogative. Okay. If he thinks someone 
if he's got a bunch of people lined up in a queue and he believes that someone was already lined up, then he can allow them to speak before the question calls. But he doesn't have to. Man, that gotcha. thing's lit up like a Christmas tree tonight. I, I don't know who <laughs> I don't I don't know who was in the queue or not, but I'm gonna allow Commissioner Woodruff to speak before we vote to cease discussion. Thank you, Mayor. I'm glad I got a chance because all of the other conversation has flown around and if we saying we care that much about firefighters, volunteer firefighters, put them on staff, pay them. Why are we why are we giving them pennies for a t training tower, again, to go somewhere else? Put them on staff and let's pay these volunteer fighter, fighters if we love them, if you say we love them that much. So quit fumbling around with it. Let's get this out of, the, out of this uh, amendment and move on, bring it back another day. Thank you. Thank you. We are now voting to cease discussion on the amendment. Huh? Yeah, but we're, 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 we're gonna vote to cease discussion. If you would, please register your vote. Cease. Would anyone like to change your vote? Ms. Cottrell, would you please tally the vote? 19 yeses, one no, zero abstentions. So the discussion has been ceased. And so I think the amendment is from Mr. Gannon to Mr. Uh, Joe Smith's motion to remove the $250,000 uh, from the public safety training complex. And that was properly seconded. So we're voting on the amendment to the amendment, which is the removal of the $250,000. If you would, please register your vote. Would anyone like to change their vote? Ms. Cottrell, would you please tally the vote? Five yeses, 15 noes, zero abstentions. So we're now voting uh, on the amendment to resolution 22610 as amended, which is uh, using the $9 million, uh, $7,650,000 for Stokes Field, $400,000 for Fredonia. 250,000 for the public safety training complex and 700,000 for the North Branch Library design. Commissioner Harper. Thank you, Mayor. While I may not be the biggest fan of the North Library, one thing I'm going to propose an amendment that we take the 7.65 million for Stokes Field, restore it to the North Library. That's, in That's the form, in the form of, a of a motion. motion. Is there a second? Okay, Commissioner Siegler, second. Any discussion on the motion to take the seven million six hundred fifty thousand that was added to Stokes Field and put it towards construction for the library? Commissioner Smith. Joe? Okay, back to the, the reason for this amendment that I made to move that money around is due to, after talking to our county engineer, this project has to be redesigned before it can go into construction. Design phase takes about a year. So this project, if we approve the design money, will be ready for full funding of construction next year's budget cycle. There's no sense in putting money towards a project and only having half the money there. That, that makes no sense at all, in my opinion, to fund half of a project. If, if we approve the design money to this year in this fiscal budget, by next May and June, it will be ready for construction dollars, and then I will wholeheartedly support getting the library their construction dollars. 
I, I support a North Branch library, and I do think this smaller scale size is way better than the grandiose design that was originally presented. Uh, that way we can hopefully get more over the next 10 to 20 years and do a Northeast branch, and then maybe a Southeast branch and a Southwest branch. Uh, but there, there's no, I don't see the point in putting this money back towards construction if the construction is not gonna be ready until the design is done, which is a year from now. So I ask you to please not support putting that money there. Let's use this money to fully pay for construction of Stokes Field. Right now, there's only $8 million in the budget for Stokes Field. That design originally called for 16 and a half million. So with the 8 million, you're gonna be losing football fields and you're gonna be losing lights. So what good are fields without lights? I'm sorry, but kids like to play after dark hits and they like to practice. So let's fund that project to its full scope and then next year we can focus on the library getting its construction dollars to its full scope. Thank you. Commissioner Pritchard. Yes, I'm not gonna let you guys take, take money from the kids in the, in the Fort Campbell area. There are a lot of kids that use Stokes Field. Stokes Field, although it's old, it's been around a while, it's poorly man maintained, but it's used all the time. You can't go a day and not see children in Stokes Field. And we owe it to those kids to give them a nice place. It, we've got parks and fields all over the place in nice neighborhoods. But on Fort Campbell Boulevard, you guys are just going to take the money and throw it away and leave Stokes Field? That's wrong. That Stokes Field is for the kids. We need to put that money towards designing it. It's been left behind for quite a few years. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner Riccone. Well, you know, this is a really intriguing proposition we're facing and that there probably is no wrong answer. You know, we're back to trying to debate or balance the library at its core to Stokes Field and Commissioner Pritchard, um, I can tell you that Commissioner Lewis fought as hard for this as you are right now. And I have the most respect for him. We set in budget. Um, but a little bit of how we got here is we went back and forth. That library was funded. It was unfunded. Stokes was fully funded, unfunded, half funded. And I thought at budget committee came to a really good point. We were trying to make sure the library had the funding in place. They were gonna to have to do a redesign because the building was gonna to be too big and we were trying to do these things. Commissioner Lewis was very magnanimous and was very working with the whole commission uh, or the whole budget commission committee. Uh, we were trying to pare down Stokes Field where we could do it kind of in phases and we looked at doing that. So we were trying to allocate some funds to it uh, to we could get fields built and get stuff in place. Um, I'm not here saying one's wrong and one's right, um, but the thought process I think the whole commission needs to know is that it wasn't uh, any, meeny, miny, mo. We debated this for days on end. Um, we tried to come up with the best answer which would get Stokesville moving and moving forward. Again, you know, we allocated money to it and the library, it had, it, had, it has been bumped and bumped and bumped and bumped. And I had a really incredulous looking uh, picture in the paper when I was uh, debating this. Um, and, and we looked at all these very hard. Again, I don't think there's a right answer or a wrong answer. I do want to point out, and, and I appreciate Commissioner Smith being so, you know, fighting for the fire tower. That is just to design money right now. And realistically, if we need that, you could throw 250,000 back in the budget where it's gonna come from. It'll just have to come out of something else. Um, but I certainly don't think the budget committee was not treating our first responders correctly. I don't think we ever were trying to cut money uh, from any of our EMA, EMS, uh, or the sheriff's office or budget. Um, you know, vote your heart, do what you wanna do. I think we've kind of taken a, a hopefully well-crafted plan and have cobbled it together. I'm a little afraid that we have kind of a Frankenstein here to where if we don't really fund Stokes to the right level, it's not going to work. If we don't fund the library to the right level, and we're going to look up and we're going to partially or underfund three things and end up having nothing by the time we look around next year. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Riccone. Commissioner Leverett. 
I'll just speak briefly because that's exactly everything Commissioner Riccone said I was going to say in somewhat. We worked really hard in the budget committee on all of these capital projects, on everything. We went days and days and days. And some days we had no resolution whatsoever that we left with no answer. And we did the best that we could to fund all of these projects, to fund things that we knew were important for community, that we knew was important for education, that was important for public safety, and that was important for recreation. And so I want I, I'm okay now with the um, with with Mr. Uh, Smith's uh, amendment. I think we need to just keep it back there. Give Stokes the money um, that we had, and go ahead with the design money for the library. And I want to make this point: this will be the second time we've spent taxpayer money on design of a public library. So please make sure y'all keep that in mind. We we just don't have taxpayer dollars to be throwing around like this and the budget was very tight this year and we worked really hard to try to come up and to make sure that these projects were funded so I think we need to just keep it like Mr. Smith originally uh, amended and with that if nothing else I'd like to call for the question as well mayor all right well Commissioner Harper's in queue I'm allow him Mr. Commissioner Harper to uh to comment thank you mayor I appreciate it once again, we made promises on the North Library far, uh, far in advance of any promises that we made for Stokesfield. Stokesfield is obviously a problem. I agree with that. But what I'm trying to do is the right thing in my mind. It may not be the right thing, but I think it is the right thing, is to fulfill the promises that we made to build a branch uh, in North Clarksville. And I'd appreciate your help on making sure we can do that. Thank you. Just just a personal comment. I think if you hadn't amended the budget, you would have done that. Huh. But here we are. So we are now voting on an amendment um, to remove the seven million six hundred and fifty thousand from Stokes Field and put it to the North Branch Library Design. Is that correct? Was that the motion? I. That, that was the motion made by Commissioner Harper, seconded by Commissioner Siegler. Ladies, y'all tracking that? That, that wasn't a real confident yes. <laughs> yeah, I see Kelly sitting back there behind you, Teresa. Yeah, she should have been sitting there at night, huh? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm messing with Kelly. So if you would, we are voting. To just so everybody will know what you're voting on. We're voting to remove, at the, that was amended, uh, the 7650000 $7, from the Stokesfield construction and place that in the North Branch Library design. If you would, please register your vote. Would anyone like to change their vote? Ms. Cottrell, would you please tally the vote? Eight yeses, 12 noes, zero abstentions. So that motion fails, and we are back to the original motion, which is the nine million. Uh, before I get to it, Commissioner Gannon, do you have an amendment? Okay, well, it ain't no sense in reading it because I'm going to have to read it again. So, Commissioner Gannon, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> the Fredonia Community Center Park design, the 400000 I would like to make an amendment that we cut that. We looked at that several times. There were other pressing issues for that. There are still other pressing issues for that. If we're going to take that money, that 400000 there are better, I wouldn't say better things, but there are more pertinent things that, are, that, are, that need to be done before that Fredonia Center goes. So I'd like to make a motion that we delete the 400,000 from the Fredonia Center park design. Is there a second? Second, Commissioner Harper. Any discussion? Okay, we are voting to amend uh, 22610 as amended to remove the $400,000 uh, from the Fredonia Community Park. If you would, please register your vote. Would anyone like to change their vote? 
Ms. Cottrell, would you please tally the vote? 17 yeses, 3 noes, 0 abstentions. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner Bryant. To make an amendment to go back to our original 22-6-10 as written by the mayor's office, direct the ordinance. So you're making a you you are making a motion to amend the amendment back to its original state as stated in 22-610. That's correct. We'll have a motion and a second, uh, Commissioner Tangy Smith. Any discussion? Commissioner Bryant, you, you don't you don't want to talk about it, do you? Your button's still lit up. Okay. Seeing no discussion. Uh, we, does that mean we go back and we don't consider Commissioner Smith's amendments? Well, this is amendment to amend his amendment, and it's to put it back the way it was before he amended it. That's what I thought. Yeah. That means that Joe did cutting all your stuff. <laughs> so I don't. I don't I don't know any other any other way to do it other than the way we're doing it. Miss Cottrell, are y'all ready? Huh? She's got it. Yeah, it's it's an amendment. It's an amendment to an amendment. Yeah. So if you would please register your vote. Would anyone like to change your vote? Ms. Cottrell, would you please tally the vote? 13 yeses, 7 noes, 0 abstentions. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioners, we are now voting on 22610 as amended, which has been amended back to its original format that was presented to you in the original resolution. Commissioner Joe Smith. Okay. Uh, well, let me get a motion first. Is there a motion? Commissioner Bill, second Commissioner Tangy Smith. Okay, Commissioner Joe Smith. Okay. I just, I want to reiterate that the library cannot use that 10 million till next budget year because it has to be redesigned. I, I don't know any other clearer way to state that other than the fact. So I'm going to make an amendment again and kind of go along with some of the amendments that have already been passed. Okay, we cut Fredonia Community Center. So instead of the 15650 to Stokes Field, I would like for that, actually, we've got to start off first. The amendment would be to remove the 10 million from the North Branch Library, add 8,050,000 to construction funds of Stokes Field. Okay, let me just catch you right there. I think you need to do 9 million for the library. No, oh, sorry, nine million. Okay. Yes, sir. Sorry, yes. So, we, so, I changed those numbers, but then I didn't change okay. it down here. Okay, so so nine nine million for the library. Yes. That puts us you're, back. You're taking at, that away. You should take. You're, you're now you're splitting up the nine million from the library. Yes. Go ahead. That would put eight million and fifty thousand dollars towards Stokes Field, which is ready for construction. It is ninety nine percent designed. It is ready for construction. Did you say eight million fifty thousand? Eight million fifty thousand. Not five hundred. Eight million fifty thousand. Eight million fifty thousand. The public safety training complex, fire tower, canine course, and south road design at two hundred and fifty thousand. The north branch library design at seven hundred thousand. That would get the ball rolling for the library to redesign to the smaller design needed for them to share that lot at, uh, oh, I can't even think of the name of the road, 101st and Whitehall, I think. It's one of those roads up there on off of 101 near Fort Campbell Boulevard. Uh, the reason for this is 
that the library had to be redesigned. I know we're spending design money twice. It is unfortunate, but it's gonna save us millions in land cost trying to find land for the Animal Control Center. And the Animal Control Center is in dire need of a new building. Luckily, their design funds are already in the budget. Also, same thing with the highway department, their design funds, because they have a building that literally, if we get a, a strong windstorm, their roof's gonna blow off. Those are already in the design phase. So next year, if we get all of these projects, the ball rolling and get the designs done on them, we can have some, some phenomenal capital projects coming forth in the next two to, two to three years where we can fund full construction. The, the library is not ready for the 10 million construction funds. It has to be redesigned. It takes a year. I believe Nick is sitting over here. He can attest it will take a year to design. And then it will be ready for that 10 million. And like I said, I'll be the first one to jump up and down and try to get them that money. All but right. I appreciate your support on this amendment. So you've heard the amendment. Is there a second? Commissioner Leverett. Discussion. Commissioner Gannon. I'm looking for somebody on the budget committee to answer this because I had many questions on the North Branch and at one time was going to push it off and I was assured that it would be broken ground this year under this physical year and that's why we put it in there because had it not we would have postponed it because that was specifically asked and I uh, Stokesfield I'm not have we designed Stokesfield yet have we put in a design for that yeah. on the higher number Based on what, what yeah, value? I, it is designed, but yeah. uh, I don't think the money. I don't think the money that bill. we're putting towards it is going to construct it. Say it again, sir. I said I don't think the money that we're putting towards it's going to construct it the way it's designed today. Correct. So there have to be a new design. It'll have to be tweaked. Yeah. Uh, Nick, do you agree with that? Yes or no? Just you can nod your head. The Stokes Field, the design that we have today, and if we uh, put this, uh, uh, it's going to be right at sixteen million to build it. Okay. And library, library yep. break around too, right? If it was done. But the I, library. I, I'll, I'll have to I'll have to refer to one of the other budget committee members okay. uh, on that. But I, I do remember that but the discussion. Yeah. My, what I re recall about the library was that if they could get it designed that way, they'd have some money to go ahead and build it mm -hmm. because we pushed it off. And so I don't, I don't know if they said, quote, we can get it designed or not. But so any, any other questions on the amendment, Commissioner Gannon? Give me a second. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Pritchard. I'm fine. You good? Commissioner Lever. Yes, May, I was just reiterating the conversation um, that we had at the budget committee, um, repeating what you said. That was all. That was all. I don't think we have. I think we're still amending amend, that amendment that the first came through Smith. We are. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we have a motion and a second. And so, commissioners, just just I want everybody to understand we we've kind of gone around a little circle uh, but we're gonna start another one so we went through that process and we voted to actually amend the budget back to what the original resolution showed then this amendment is an amendment to take the nine million that was dedicated to the library, $8,050,000 going to Stokesville, $250,000 going to the public safety training complex, and $700,000 staying with the library for construction. We have a motion and a second, or for design, excuse me. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? If you would, please register your vote. I, I know how I'm going to vote. I just got to make sure I say the right word. I, I promise you I ain't scared to vote. 
Uh, I'm going to vote no. I'm going to vote no. Uh, yeah, if you would, uh, Ms. Cottrell, would you please tally? Oh, excuse me. Does anyone want to change their vote? Ms. Cottrell, would you please tally the vote? Ten yeses, ten noes, zero abstentions. The, and the chair votes no. So motion fails. All right, so we are back to 22610 as amended back to its original format or its original text that was in the original motion. That's where I get off. I think we're back to the very first motion. It's amended to, to mirror it. But we're voting uh, on it. That's all been amended out. <laughs> if y'all would just uh, give us just a second to discuss this. Commissioners, without objection, we're going to take a five-minute recess. I want to make sure we vote on this right. Uh, so five minutes, please.
Okay, commissioners, we're going to reconvene in about one minute. Patrick, are y'all about ready to get fired back up again? So, Patrick, if you're ready, uh, we're going to go back into session. Commissioners, um, so what we, what we're technically, what we're going to be voting on now is Mr. Joe Smith's original amendment as amended, which puts it back to 2269, and if once we vote on that, then we can vote on 2269 as amended. So, I'm sorry? 22610. I'm sorry. So is there a motion for approval of on Mr. Smith's amendment as amended, which puts it back to its original state? Is there a motion for approval? Commissioner Harper, is there a second? Commissioner Rasney. Any discussion? Do you have a question? If you have a question, please uh, hit your mic. Yes, sir. What are we voting on again? We are voting. Mr. Smith made an amendment. The one with the... Uh, the the very first one he made. The very first one. Okay. And we've gone full circle. And, and Ms. Bryant made a motion mm -hmm. to amend his motion back to original. So we have to vote on his amendment as amended to get us back to the resolution. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? If you would, please register your vote. Would anyone like to change their vote? Ms. Cottrell, would you please tally the vote? 15 yeses, 5 noes, 0 abstentions. Thank you, ma'am. Now we're voting on 22610 as amended, which puts it back to its original text and format. Commissioner Riccone. Mayor, Is, let me get a motion. Is there a motion for approval? Commissioner Gannon, second. Commissioner Riccone. Commissioner Riccone. I'm not going to like to look on your face when I say this. <laughs> but right now we've got the library funded. Stokesfield is certainly near and dear to everybody's heart. Certainly is needed. I make a mo I want to amend it, the, the entire budget, to add $8.5 million to the budget. That will go to fund Stokesfield, fully fund Stokesfield. We'll have to borrow the money. We'll have debt service on it for a year. If the library in Stokesfield get that they're built this year, well, then we're built and we're done and we're just servicing the debt. If one gets built first and the other one grows into next year, they we debt serviced it for money we didn't need to borrow and they can reallocate it. This body can reallocate it next year. And I know we don't have the pennies for that. I know that's not what we were coming out of the budget to do, but that seems to be the tenor of this body. So 8.5 additional money, 8.5 million. So there's a motion, is there a second? Commissioner Pritchard, any discussion on the amendment? The amendments to add 8.5 million to Stokesfield. Commissioner Smith. Again, I'll, I'll say I don't know why we would take out debt when we're going to have 10 million or 9 million, sorry, the other million was libraries, $9 million sitting there that cannot be used until the next budget year. To, to me, that's not exactly fiscally responsible. If we could adjust this budget and fund Stokesfield fully this year, then the library can be funded next year when it is actually ready for construction with a new design. Uh, I just, I don't see, there's no fiscal responsibility in taking out debt for something we're gonna have $10 million just sitting in an account for a year for a project that's not ready till next fiscal year. Commissioner Gannon. Thank you, Mayor. 
Jeff Taylor. How many, how many, how much were our capital projects when we started at the beginning of the budget season? What was the amount? Well over a hundred million. Well over a hundred. How much did we have left after we, after we approved what we approved? Including the ARPA projects and all these projects, it was around 43 million and change. About 43 million, but we still have a hundred million left over in projects for next year. So when you start talking about building the library next year and other things, that's one thing that we looked at. We've got schools, we've got all these other projects and stuff that are lined up for next year. And you're trying to push one off and to squeeze it in there or add extra debt to other projects we got for 100, over 100 million for next year? And I, I ask that, that we don't add any more debt and then we vote on it 22, 610 the way it is. Thank you. And just for a point of clarification, that yes. $9 million for the library, we would be borrowing the money for that if I'm not mistaken on that as well. Talking to your mic. Oh, sorry. For that $9 million for the library, if memory serves me correct, we were using bonded debt to pay for that as well. Commissioner Riccone. My recollection is the library could get built this year. My recollection is that Stokes was fully designed and could be built this year. And I want to say my recollection too is every project that we're budgeting we're probably going to under under budget because everything's gone up so fast, so much anyway. So, again, I'm not really keen on adding debt, but I do think both of those could possibly go this year. I think both of those could end up being funded and not even be built this year. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Smith. Mayor, would, would I be able to get Mr. Nick Powell up there to answer? What? Can I get Mr. Nick Powell up there to answer a question? Would that What's the question? If what, when we redesign the library, which is in this year's budget, and even in my amendment that I had, how long it would take to design it? Yeah, Nick. He's the expert. Yeah, but, but I want to ask the question too, can we build Stokes Field or are we going to have to redesign it? And that, that I mean, you keep saying that we got to redesign it. We got to redesign it. Everybody knows that. But I'm almost 100% sure we got to redesign Stokes Field too. The last conversation. So go ahead, Nick. Answer the question, please. Go ahead. How, how long would it take to design the library? So if everything was perfect, being that that was the only project that the design team that has been hired on to do, it's probably going to take them seven, eight, nine months if everything was perfect. We typically try to, in a normal process, give a year for a design project, but we've got a little head start on this one because we've already gone through the million dollar process. So we're not 100% starting over with planning. But we are 100% starting over with structural design. So I can't tell you exactly how long this design team would take, but it still has to go through the full process of the county reviewing it, the library reviewing it. It will not be ready before spring of 2023. I can almost guarantee that with everything that's perfect, it would be spring of next year before it'd be ready to go out to bid. That's with ideal conditions. Okay, so Nick, is it is it fair is it fair to answer Commissioner Smith's question that it could be done in eight months, it could be done in eighteen months, the design. Is that fair? Eight or eighteen? Eight to eighteen months. Sure, yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And then my question is oh, oh, Stokes you? Field is ninety nine percent design, correct? That's correct. The $8 million in the budget would only get half of that design done. Was that correct based on our conversation? It would be very difficult to get Stokes Field constructed as designed with $8 million. Which means we would have to come back later on and add money to be able to add lights and finish, what was it, I think we talked about the football fields? Yeah, I think if you're talking about an $8 million budget, you're talking about more than just the football field and lights being taken out of the project. It's playground. It's more than that in order to get Stokes for $8 million. And that's all I have for you, Nick. Sorry. Conversation. If oh. Mr. Taylor's saying we were already going to take debt service for the $10 million, why don't we just go ahead and fund a full project, which would be Stokes Field, which would be a great addition 
to our Fort Campbell side of town and, and the, you know, the little league teams up there and the football teams up there and fund it completely. And then when the library is ready, we can come back and make another amendment and take out the debt service to do the library. To me, I would say let's fund a project to its full capacity and, and not do half the job and then come back and have to do another half. But that's just my point of view of thing. All right, Commissioner Gannon. I don't have anything. I just say let's call for a question and, and we got over a hundred million worth of projects for next year that are already on the books and and we got schools that gotta be built next year as well and stuff like that. So we got a lot of debt coming for next year that, that the budget committee sees, but you guys maybe not have put all that together at this point in time and by you taking that library and pushing it off. You ain't guaranteeing that they're going to get done. And Nick pretty much said that there's a very good potential that the design could be done in eight months and it could break ground. So, again, I'd say vote and leave, leave everything intact. Any other discussion on Commissioner Riccone's amendment uh, to add $8.5 million to the budget for Stokes Field? All right, seeing none, if you would, please register your vote. Would anyone like to change your vote? Ms. Cottrell, would you please tally the vote? Five yeses, 15 noes, zero abstentions. Thank you, ma'am. We are now voting on 22. Did we vote on Commissioner Smith's amendment? Yes. Yeah, okay. We are now voting on 22610 as amended. Which reads the same. Which reads the same. It was amended. Uh, it, as amended, it still reads the same. <laughs> Commissioner Joe Smith. I'm going to keep trying to fight here. Sorry. Keep trying to change. I just think Stokes Field is a project that's 99% designed and it needs to be fully funded. So I'm going to make an amendment again to the amended. Uh, remove the $9 million from the North Branch Library construction and add the 8 point, I want to add $8.3 million to Stokes Field construction and 700,000 to the North Branch Library design. And I will say I'm probably going to come back in this year and do an amendment to this budget and try to get the 250,000 for the training training co uh, complex fire tower and K9 course in South Road, but I don't have it in this amendment. So is there a second Seconded by Commissioner Lewis. Any discussion on the amendment? So the amendment is to add 8.3 million to Stokes Field and 700,000 uh, for the library design. Commissioner Gannon. I think we're in a crossroads of, of where we were in the budget committee where we're trying to we go back to Commissioner Riccone, which one is more important than the other and things of that nature. James Lewis gave a sterling speech for the Stokes Field and, and those kids want to play ball. They need to play ball. They need a place to play ball. And that needs to be that needs to be taken care of as well. But you also have the library. So you're going to deny all the young kids to read books, not the chance to read books that are out in the Fort Campbell area. You're going to take that away from them just for the older kids can play ball or you do both which is what the budget committee decided to do. I don't think either one is more important than the other. I think they're both very important, and I would suggest that we stay with our original 22-6-10. Any other discussion on the amendment? So we are now voting to amend 22-6-10 as amended for the 8.3 for Stokes and 700,000 for the library design. If you would, please register your vote. Does anyone want to change their vote? 
Ms. Cottrell, would you please tally the vote? Five yeses, 15 noes, zero abstentions. Thank you, ma'am. All right, now we are back to 20, 22 610 as amended, which is basically the way it was presented. Is there a motion for approval? Commissioner Chandler, second. Commissioner Rasnick, any discussion on 22610 as amended? If you would, please register your vote. Does anyone want to change their vote? Ms. Cottrell, would you please tally the vote? 16 yeses, four noes, zero abstentions. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioners, any unfinished business? You'll see on your reports filed, uh, one that of note is the report on debt obligation that we're, we are required to uh, present that to you uh, and report that uh, for the state. Accounts and budgets month, monthly report was uh, uh, added at the end uh, after, excuse me, after um, informal. And just a couple of announcements. Uh, our VSO will be hosting uh, the annual Flag Day ceremony on June 14th at the VW Post 4895 on Haines Street. If you would, uh, please bring any worn or damaged flags to the VSO o office prior to June 14th. And commissioners, also the formal unveiling ceremony of the United States Colored Troops Monument will take place at Fort Defiance Civil War Park and Interpretive Center this Saturday, June 18th at 9 o'clock a.m. Uh, the Montgomery County Public Arts Committee uh, helped to support this effort along with uh, this body. So thank you for that. Uh, with no further business, I'll call on the sheriff to adjourn us. Board of County Commissioners now stands adjourned. May God save this state and its honorable board of county commissioners.